I'm Tony Porter. I'm in the Department of Political Science at McMaster University, and I study international relations and global governance. For my type of research, you don't really use quantitative data with a lot of numbers. You're trying to look very carefully at how a rule works, whether that's, say, a law or a computer algorithm or a private standard, and how that type of rule interacts with the people who have to use it, the technical system, the computer system, and the government. These days, everybody's being exposed in some way or another to big data. The obvious way is when you get on the web and you start allowing websites that you visit to use your information. So that's something that people have a lot of anxiety about. There's different views about, is that good or is it bad? The good part is that it gives you things that you know might suggest a product that you haven't thought of, or it can help you find a website faster. The thing that people are really anxious about is surveillance and the information that you're giving up, so how you can be tracked. And there's a lot of concern that with big data, uh, for instance, employers will be able to collect all sorts of information that people were not previously giving to them. So an obvious one is if you've got a embarrassing photo on Facebook, but there's also millions of other records that are being created in medical records or even if you visit sites and the recordings of where you go can be put together to create a surprisingly accurate and detailed picture of who you are or at least who you're thought to be and then that can be accessed by an employer potentially by hiring a company or by buying information from a company. So in order to enjoy the benefits but not lose all your privacy and be discriminated against because of some impression that's been created through the use of big data, it's really important to have rules that protect people and put limits around how the data is used. But because we're so globalized, a lot of our activities are international. So Facebook, for instance, operates in, in Europe but it's headquartered in the United States, same with Amazon. So it's collecting information from around the world and bringing it together and producing insights. But when it crosses the border, whose rules apply? So what I'm doing is to look at all these different types of rules that are both within different countries, that are agreed internationally after lots of negotiations, and that are present in the companies themselves or the algorithms themselves, the codes, and to figure out how this can all work together not just to allow the data to flow, but to protect people. When they're brought together with members of our community, McMaster's researchers will generate ideas of enormous power. Big ideas that can build better cities.